Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming out tonight. This is our last salon of, um, of 2017 and the end of our fourth year of doing this crazy thing together. And I'm so glad to have so many of you out here to celebrate our little project and so many wonderful fellows and past speakers in the room. I'm so happy to have you all here. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, I'm gonna do that thing where I ask, who's here for the first time tonight? And then I'm gonna kinda pretend I can see the hands. There's a lot of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Everyone else, give them a warm round of welcome. Thank you for coming out. Um, real quick, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a quick summary of what we're up to here so you know that how this thing works. Uh, we are going to give six short talks. Tonight's gonna be a little bit different than usual because we'll also be pinning our 2017 fellows, which is really exciting. Um, and then we'll have a cocktail break in the middle, which is your opportunity to recharge with a cocktail. I hope you have a cocktail in hand now because we do have rather a lot of toasts. It's a tradition around these parts. So uh, the bar can provide if you don't already have that taken care of. Um, this evening, like all of the Knights of Odd Salon, is inspired by the odd corners of history, science, art, and adventure. And I'd like to hear adventure a little bit more. We can get a, there we go. Um, and um, we take our, our core inspiration from the idea of a movable cabinet of curiosities. And this night, Oddments is our fourth annual uh, themeless evening where what we do is we ask our, our speakers and our community to suggest stories, either that they pitched earlier in the year that we weren't able to find a spot for, or something that just really didn't fit into any of the themes that we ran with. And so we have a really diverse grab bag of stories tonight. It's always uh, extra, extra fun. And our speakers, as always, are both experts and enthusiastic amateurs. So I encourage you to be generous with your applause and support for all of our speakers. It's intimidating to face that blinding light for the first time. And tonight we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Tonight's stories cover things like a mysterious unicorn of Africa, uh, some history of naked ladies, some scholarly history, important scholarly history of naked ladies. The quest for a mysterious island mentioned in Jules Verne's novels. Um, a variety of reasons, once again, to be really grateful for modern medicine. Uh, I'm just going to leave this here and say this. This thing right here, covered tonight. And, and a really amazing story that I thought was perfect for this evening because it's a story about how obscure knowledge can save the day. Um, and so I am excited to have a story about a typo that also helped save us in World War II. So that's going to be coming up tonight. And one thing I'd like to also remind all of you is that we do not want or expect a quiet audience. So please take your opportunities and shout it out uh, loud and clear so that we can hear what you are yelling at us up here on the stage. I would like to hear one right now. Rhinoplasty. Rhinoplasty. Four syllables, one more time. Rhinoplasty. Much better. Awesome. Okay. And this stage is your stage. Odd Salon is, by its definition, an open and welcoming environment for you to get up and tell a strange story in front of strangers for the very first time. So if you are interested in speaking, if you get inspired tonight, if you have a story that you have been thinking about that you'd like to share, you can go onto our website. We have a form um, on the Speak page. It's pretty easy to find. We're wrapping up for 2017, but we'll be starting planning for uh, 2018 in like one hot second. So don't, don't hesitate. Go ahead and, and put your name in the bucket for that. And then finally, please follow us on all of the places, but you can also follow us right now because we live tweet our salons so you can play along uh, from the audience and you can throw things up on Instagram. Uh, we'd love to see your pictures um, and comments on all of the things that happen here. And before I go into my invocation, I would like to welcome Laura up here, one very special Wolpertinger for the evening. Talk. Talk. <laughs> Hello, Odd Salon. Hi. So uh, we have a costume contest. Is anyone here dressed as a, as a Harvey? If you are, come on up. Martin, that means you. 
<laughs> so last year we had a great costume contest. It seems like the turnout was maybe a little low this time. Um, I am dressed as the Harviathan. I have a little flippy tail and everything. But uh, for the most part, it seems like everyone's just wearing ears, which is totally legit, but difficult to judge. So we do have one, one entrant uh, who, who was going to be our, our judge, but this is an imposter. I don't know how many of you uh, managed to make it to imposter this year, but this is an excellent send up of a small bear pretending to be a Harvey. So uh, in recognition for the other person who is game to dress up funny, aside from Ryan, who is also, you know, in, in costume, he, he put makeup on and he will tell you repeatedly. Um, we have a small token of our thanks. Next year, though, I expect really interesting things, all right? <laughs> Leveling up for year five. Thank you, Martin. Um, okay, so I... It's really difficult to think about what to say at the beginning of Oddments. Uh, we don't have a theme. We can't rely on the, the easy backlist of stories. And as we close out this fourth year, I was really just looking back at how we started this thing. And the way that we began at Odd Salon is um, an idea and a few friends and a few more friends that we were able to convince that if we gave them a shiny lapel pin and called them a fellow, <laughs> that they would agree to get up on stage a minimum number of time and do something that they didn't know how to do. It is a very nice pin. Um, so it was very experimental and we set out together to seek out the strange and overlooked stories from history, science, art, and adventure. That's our, that's our mission. And we weren't sure about a lot of things. We were, we were not experts ourselves. We wondered, could amateurs hold the stage? Would it be an acceptable situation to have people get up and talk about something that they didn't know anything about in a professional or academic way? Could, would people come out and listen in San Francisco in this era that we are having in San Francisco? Would people come out to a nightclub and listen to stories from their friends about history and the humanities and the sciences. And then also, how many upsetting facts about otters could we fit into just one talk? The answer is surprisingly more than you would think. Too many. Too many, too many possibly at least one too many. Um, and the project that brings us together is inspired by very old ideas. It's inspired by gatherings of Parisian ladies and uh, Victorian men with improbably large mustaches at the scientific revolution. But there are these really old models, and when we looked around trying to find something that we could model what we wanted to create after in the current contemporary era, we couldn't find one. And we didn't know how to do it. Um, but we decided, possibly recklessly, to try and do this thing that we didn't know how to do anyway, together. Which brings me to the first quote of the evening. Uh, G.K. Chesterton, a quotable dude, wrote this wonderful tidbit in his book called What's Wrong with the World, also an excellent title, written in 1910. And he wrote, if a thing is worth doing, it is worth doing badly. And I think there's a casual interpretation of that that feels negative, but I actually think it's really wonderful because what it gets at is the, this core idea that if you want to do something, you should give it a shot. You should try, even if you don't know what you're doing, because you're never going to figure it out if you don't take that first step. Um, so I think this is a, a concept worthy of, of exploring and it speaks to his love of the amateur, which he wrote about elsewhere, and also brings us back to what we're doing here. Those first salons were super amateur hour. Uh, they made the mistake of putting me in charge of the soundboard, which also meant that I turned on disco lights that were sound activated on everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, the projector routinely turned off halfway through the second half for reasons, and we had to turn it back on by Steen climbing onto a, a chair in the middle of the room and poking it with a broom. And <laughs> we were still really figuring out this whole storytelling for a nonfiction thing, but I think, I think we've gotten a lot better over the years, or I mean, I think so. And I've 
thought about what are those things that we've learned? What have we learned? Uh, what do we believe as Odsalon? And I think there are some really, really important things that we have taken away that we didn't necessarily realize in the beginning. And the first and most important thing is that history belongs to all of us. There are no gatekeepers, only willing participants. And the second thing is that curiosities and oddities lead to wonder. And wonder is such an incredibly powerful motivator to make you take the next step and dig into further things. And so to find the weird and celebrate the interesting bits from history and to learn how to tell those stories in an accessible way is not the same thing as dumbing them down, which is an important, an important point. And then we've also realized this, that there are three really critical elements in getting ourselves to engage with our cultural heritage, and that's the open and free access to knowledge. It is the invitation to participate, not just consume. And it is the permission. It is the permission to get up in front of the microphone and not know how to use it and be blinded by the light and to completely fuck up. It's really, really, really important to grant ourselves and each other that permission. And this project has been um, an enormous labor of love made of optimism and the shared love of the strange. And over this time, we have learned together how to manage all of these things, how to use the microphone and have it not make that really terrible sound. And we've had people who have stepped up who have recorded hundreds and hundreds of hours of these salons out of <laughs> their own, out of their own time and the goodness of their heart. We have amazing photographers, and we, we dragged Steen with us from another venue to help us do our AV and make us sound better. We have a small army of volunteers that support us in making it so that we can do this in San Francisco, a city where it's pretty expensive and difficult to do cultural heritage experimental dance kind of, uh, kind of things right now. So we couldn't do it without all of you who have volunteered and helped and without all of you who come out on a regular basis to see this. And I think it is a tremendous triumph for us to be able to be doing this for years in a row, to have already set dates for next year and be looking forward to a fifth year of doing this together. <laughs> so, back to Mr. Chesterton. Sometime around halfway through this year, we passed our 500th talk. This year, we welcome our 60th fellow. So, Although Odsalon may be passing out of its amateur hour into something approaching knowing how we're doing this and, and what we think is real and true to this project that we're doing together, we will still continue to celebrate the inclusion of amateurs always in all aspects of what we do and give permission to fuck up. And um, Chesterton wrote about this. He spoke about his father, who was a real estate agent by trade, but who dabbled in the arts extensively. And he wrote, um, in everything that matters, the inside is much larger than the outside. On the whole, I'm glad that he was never a professional artist. It might have stood in the way of his becoming an amateur, which I think is a really nice setup for this, which he wrote in his biography of Robert Browning. And he, he talked about, um, the power of the passion that is behind amateur pursuits. And he, he wrote, the word amateur has come by a thousand oddities of language to convey an idea of tepidity, whereas the word itself has the meaning of passion. Nor is this peculiarly confined to the mere form of the word. The actual characteristic of these nameless dilettanti is a genuine fire and reality. A man must love a thing very much if he not only practices it without any hope of fame or money, but even practices it without any hope of doing it well. <laughs> Such a man must love the toils of the work more than any other man can love the rewards of it. And so I'd like to ask you to join me in lifting the first glass of the last salon of 2017 to all of the wonderful experts who have strayed from their areas of expertise with us and to all the enthusiastic amateurs who have shared strange and wonderful stories and to the fellows who have become mentors in this process and to all of you. May we all grant ourselves the, the permission and the passion to try something worth doing and to give ourselves permission to do it badly. to the lovers. <laughs>